Yellow. We've got here plasma oscillation. This is definitely a um, more physics uh, technical uh, article. Um, so if, if you have an understanding of physics and oscillations, um, waves, then <clears throat> this is great. If you don't, this may not make too much sense, um, but it might still be interesting to listen to, maybe to uh, begin to familiarize yourself with stuff. <clears throat> um, I will say right off the bat, I may not pronounce everything right, especially like Langmuir. I don't know if that's how you say his name. Anyway, quick one. So let's, uh, let's bang it out. Plasma oscillations, also known as Langmuir waves after Irving Langmuir, are rapid oscillations of the electron density in conducting media such as plasmas or metals in the ultraviolet region. The oscillations can be described as an instability in the dielectric function of a free electron gas. The frequency depends only weakly on the wavelength of the oscillation. The quasiparticle resulting from the quantization of these oscillations is the plasmon. Langmuir, pardon me, Langmuir, Langmuir waves were discovered by American physicists uh, Irving Langmuir and Louis Tonks in the 1920s. They are parallel in form to Jeans instability waves, which are caused by gravitational instabilities in a static medium. Plasmon. I don't actually know what plasmon is. A plasmon is a quantum of plasma oscillation. Just as light consists of photons, the plasma oscillation consists of plasmons. The plasmon can be considered as a quasiparticle since it arises from the quantization of plasma oscillations, just like phonons are quantizations of mechanical. Cool. In gene sensibility, I, I know something of that. Um, gene sensibility causes the collapse of interstellar gas clouds and subsequent star formation, named after James Jeans. Uh, it occurs when the internal gas pressure is not strong enough to prevent gravitational collapse of a region filled with matter. Cool. Pardon me for sniffling. I'm sure that's annoying. Anyway, mechanism. Consider an electrically neutral plasm. Oops, plasm. Consider an electrically neutral plasma in equilibrium consisting of a gas of positively charged ions and negatively charged electrons. I'll say that one more time. An electrically neutral plasma in equilibrium, consisting of a gas of positively charged ions and negatively charged electrons. If one displaces by a tiny amount an elect... Sorry, if one, anyone such as you or me, displaces by a tiny amount an electron or a group of electrons with respect to the ions, the Coulomb force pulls the electrons back, acting as a restoring force. So in the case here, cold electrons. If the thermal motion of the electrons is ignored, it is possible to show that the charge density oscillates at the plasma frequency, represented uh, omega sub pe is the plasma frequency. Omega sub pe equals the square root of n sub e e squared over m star epsilon naught. And this is in radians per second as frequencies all always are. Um, and then we also have this as the equivalent to square root of 4 pi n sub e e squared over m star um, that is, if you remove um, the permittivity of free space. Uh, and now this is where n sub e, n sub e is the number density of electrons. Um, e is the electric charge. M star is the effective mass of the electron. And epsilon sub naught is the permittivity of free space which is like, it's a, I forget exactly what it is. It's a small number. <laughs> I know that much here. I'm Googling it. 8.85, roughly, times 10 to the minus 12 meters per inverse cube. <laughs> Sorry, uh, what is it? Uh, seconds to the fourth A squared over M cubed kilograms. It's weird, weird units. But that is the permittivity of free space. 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. 
So to just read over this one more time, it is omega sub PE, the um, plasma frequency equals the square root of the number density of electrons times the electric charge squared over the effective mass of the electron times the permittivity of free space, or the square root of four pi, the number density of electron times the electric charge squared over the effective mass. And that is n sub e, e squared over m star uh, epsilon naught, or four pi n sub e, e squared over m star. Moving on. Note that the above formula is derived under the approximation that the ion mass is infinite. That is important to note. Ion mass is infinite in that derivation. This is generally a good approximation as the electrons are so much lighter than ions. Proof using Maxwell's equations. Assuming charge density oscillations, rho of omega equals rho sub naught, times e to the minus i omega t, a wave equation solution, it would seem. Uh, the continuity equation thus is del dot j equals the negative partial rho uh, with respect to t equals i omega rho of o omega. The Gauss law, uh, del dot e of omega equals 4 pi rho of omega. The conductivity, j of omega, equals, equals sigma of omega times e of omega. Taking the, div taking the divergence of both sides and substituting the above relations, we have i omega rho of omega equals 4 pi sigma of omega rho of omega, which is always true only if 1 plus 4 pi i sigma of omega over omega omega equals zero. But this is also the dielectric constant, C Drude model. I'm not familiar with that. The Drude model of electrical conduction was pr proposed in 1900 by Paul Drude to explain the transport properties of electrons in materials. Basically, Ohm's law was well established and stated that the current J and the voltage V driving the current are related to the resistance of the material. Da, 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 da. Okay, so this is also the dielectric constant epsilon of omega equals 1 plus 4 pi i sigma of omega over omega. So that is what is uh, always true if that. If that um, dielectric constant equals 0, pardon me. So this is also the dielectric constant e, uh, epsilon of omega um, and the condition of transparency. For example, epsilon greater than or equal to zero from a certain plasma frequency, omega sub p, and above. The same condition here, epsilon equals zero, applied to make a possible, uh, sorry, applied to make possible also the propagation of density waves in the charge density. Um, so with that, the parentheses, let me just read that sentence more fluidly. But this is also the dielectric constant, epsilon of omega and the condition of transparency, the same condition here, epsilon equals not, or epsilon equals zero, applied to make possible also the propagation of density waves in the charge density. That feels a little clunky, that sentence. This expression must be modified in the case of electron positron plasmas, often encountered in astrophysics. Since the frequency is independent of the wavelength, these oscillations have an infinite phase velocity and zero group velocity. Interesting. Let me take a second to think about that. Frequency is independent of wavelength. The oscillations have infinite phase velocity and zero group velocity. Cool. Note that when m star equals m sub e, the plasma frequency, omega sub p e, depends only on physical constants and electron density n sub e. Oh, sorry. Depends only on physical constants and electron density. Interesting. The numeric expression for angular plasma frequency is f sub p e. So this is frequency in uh, f in hertz, not in omega. Um, oh, this is just a simple conversion. It's f equals omega over 2 pi. Okay. Yeah, we all know that. 
Um, metals are only transparent to light with a frequency higher than the plasma. Sorry, with a frequency higher than the metal's plasma frequency. Metals are only transparent to light with a frequency higher than the metal's plasma frequency. For typical metals such as aluminum or silver, n sub e, that is the electron uh, number, right? Yeah, um, the number density of electrons. Uh, for typical metals such as aluminum or silver, n sub e is approximately 10 to the 23 uh, per cubic centimeter, which, uh, which brings the plasma frequency into the ultraviolet region. This is why most metals reflect visible light and appear shiny. Cool. Warm electrons. When the effect of the electron thermal speed V sub E thermal equals the square root of K sub B, the Boltzmann constant, uh, T sub E, I guess the equilib equilibrium temperature over M sub E, um, the mass of the electron. So again, that's the square root when the uh, thermal speed um, equals square root k sub b t over m when the effects of that <laughs> I'm sorry I'm starting over for myself it takes a bit for me to understand these things when the effects of the electron thermal speed that are taken into account the electron pressure acts as a restoring force as well as the electric field and the oscillations propagate with yeah, access restoring force as well as the electric as, as well as the electric field, and the oscillations propagate with frequency and wave number related by the longitudinal Langmuir wave. Um, and here is the um, dispersion relation, I guess. Omega squared equals the um, o omega sub p e squared plus three k b, sorry three k sub b t sub e over m sub e k squared, which again is the plasma oscillation squared plus three, the Boltzmann constant, the equilibrium temperature over the um, mass of the electron times k squared. Uh, and this equals more simplified, omega sub pe e squared plus three k squared times v uh, sub e thermal squared, which is the plasma frequency squared plus three times K squared times the electric electron thermal speed squared. Um, so this is called the uh, Bohm-Gross dispersion relation. The Bohm-Gross dispersion relation. If the spatial scale is large compared to the Debye length, is it Debye or Debye? I've never actually known. I wonder if the internet has a quick answer if I just Search, come on, Internet to buy. And I don't see something really quick and easy. I feel like it's to buy, not Debbie. <laughs> okay, so the spatial scale, I'm, I'm just going to pronounce it to buy. Sorry if it's wrong and bothers you. If the spatial scale is large compared to the Debye length, the oscillations are only weakly modified by the pressure term. But at small scales, the pressure term dominates and the wave becomes dispersionless with a speed of root three uh, dot or times, I, I guess no vector here, so times uh, the thermal electron velocity. For such waves, however, the electron thermal speed is comparable to the phase velocity. In other words, velocity is comparable to the phase velocity, which is defined as omega over k which if you do not know that, this is not a good video for you. <laughs> um, which I don't say to gatekeep, but just that is a, that is a very fundamental thing of waves. Um, but I can recommend textbooks if, if you would like to learn more. They're very heady though, so the, the waves textbook I could recommend would also come with the recommendation of a mechanics textbook and a calculus textbook whatever. Um, so all that, the, the relation there, uh, electron thermal speed is comparable to phase velocity. So the plasma waves can accelerate electrons that are moving with speed nearly equal to the phase velocity of the wave. 
This process often leads to a form of collisionless damping called Landau damping. Okay, collisionless damping called Landau damping. Um, effect of damping of longitudinal space charge waves in plasma or a similar environment. This phenomenon prevents an instability from developing and creates a region of stability in the perimeter. Consequently, the large K portion in the dispersion relation is difficult to observe and seldom of consequence. In a bounded plasma, fringing electric fields can result in propagation of plasma oscillations, even when the electrons are cold. Huh, that's interesting. In a plasma, oh, sorry, um, I, I don't know much about plasma, so if this stuff is actually obvious here, eh, whatever, I'm learning. In a metal or semiconductor, the effect of the ion's periodic potential must be taken into account. This is usually done by using the electron's effective mass in place of m. Plasma oscillations and the effect of the negative mass. Plasma oscillations may give rise to the effect of the negative mass. The mechan uh, what, Okay, what do we mean negative mass here? In theoretical physics, negative mass is a hypothetical type of exotic matter this mass is of opposite sign to the mass of normal matter. Oh, okay, yeah, then, right. Such matter would violate one or more energy conditions and exhibit strange properties, such as the oppositely oriented acceleration for an applied force. So plasma oscillations may give rise to the effect of the negative mass. The mechanical model giving rise to the negative effective mass effect okay, uh, is depicted in figure one. A core with mass m sub 2 is connected internally through the spring with constant k2 to a shell with mass m1. The system is subjected to the external sinusoidal force f of t equals f sine omega t. If we solve the equations of motion for the masses m1 and m2 and replace the entire system with a single effective mass m effective, we obtain m effective equals m1 plus m2 um, resonant frequency squared over, or are we talking resonant? Uh, uh, whatever. m1 plus m2 times omega sub zero squared over omega sub zero squared minus omega squared, where omega sub zero equals the root of k2 over m2. Okay. That makes sense. Um, when the frequency omega approaches omega sub zero from above the effective mass m effective will be negative. Sorry, from above, when the frequency omega approaches omega naught from above, the effective mass will be negative. And let's look at this real quick. So a mechanical model giving rise to the negative effective mass is depicted in figure one. A core with mass two it's connected internally through a spring with constant K2 to a shell mass 1. The system is subjected to an external sinusoidal force, F of T. <coughs> Pardon me. Core with mass is connected internally through a spring with, uh, with blank to a shell with mass. Okay. Cool, cool. Alrighty, uh, the negative the negative effective mass density becomes also possible becomes also possible based on is that it's okay. I hope that doesn't make sense. Becomes also possible based on the electromechanical coupling exploiting plasma oscillations of a free electron gas. See figure two. Okay, free electrons gas M two is embedded. Um, into ionic lattice. I didn't actually mean to make that big yet here. I don't know if this will zoom in for you guys. Um, is embedded into the ion, uh, ionic lattice, pardon me, ionic lattice M1 um, and omega P is the plasma frequency, the left sketch. The equivalent mechanical scheme of the system, right sketch. Let's see. Okay. Cool. Fair enough, fair enough. Oops. Okay, the negative mass appears as a result of vibration of a metallic particle with a frequency of omega 
which is close which is close the which is close to the frequency of the plasma oscillations of the electron gas m2 relatively to the yeah, wait which is close yeah okay which is close to the frequency of the plasma oscillations of the electron gas m2 relatively to the ionic lattice m1 the plasma oscillations are represented with the elastic spring k2 equals omega p squared m2 where omega p is the plasma frequency Thus, the metallic particle vibrated with the external frequency omega is described by the effective mass m effective equals m1 plus m2 omega squared omega p squared, uh, sorry, over omega p squared minus omega squared. So that's the same as the earlier effective mass, just um, the uh, resonant there is uh, replaced with omega p. Um, and this is negative when the frequency omega approaches omega p from above. It's the same. Metamaterials exploiting the effect of the negative mass in the vicinity of the plasma frequency were reported. Cool. And that is plasma oscillations. Um, there's a lot more that can be read about here. Electron wake, plasmon, relativ relativistic quantum chemistry, surface plasmon resonance, upper hybrid oscillation, and generally waves and plasmas. <clears throat> and they're all of our sources. It's interesting. Cool. Later.